Art is that uh, RISC uh, is a program uh, by Purple to Mobile and to put it shortly it, it works in the intersection of human rights and visual arts. So Art is that RISC program is uh, offering residencies, breathers for visual art practitioners who need to leave their home cities, their home countries for a short period of time when the situation is uh, basically complicated. They might have been tortured, there might be court cases going on. Each case is really different. We work as uh, curators and uh, so we're in the art world and we, are, uh, we have residencies not only for artists but also for critics, for theorists, uh, for curators uh, and anyone who's in the art world who uh, is in need of a breather, as Marita put it or also as a stepping stone to another path because they need to escape uh, harrowing difficult situations. We actually work in the professional art world which means it's, it's uh, something that treats the artists as professionals, not as refugees, not as asylum seekers, not as somehow somebody that we have to do a favor to. We are actually honored to have them with us in our countries and that way we kind of treat them as equals and not as uh, patronizing, looking down on them. It was really pretty successful already before that, but this year has been really exceptional. So it's if you can say a few words. He had a residence in Helsinki 2014, and then he returned back to Aleppo. I organized around 20 festivals uh, in Pass. Uh, past year, so international festival, but that kind of thing it was the best for me because first I was working with not professional people. Uh, I saw how much creative can be people, even if they don't study art, and I saw the people idea in street people ideas, and I work with the people from village, people from popular area, and this uh, experience was really unique. And I think uh, art camping for me it was the important message ever can and document uh, for the uh, civilian life at the war zone. And uh, art camping becomes successful now and many countries want it because uh, it's the kind of the solution for the, uh, for the understanding each other, especially also with the refugees problem in, in uh, West. But uh, I'm now I have a scholarship and when I finish it, I will come back to do art camping for sure. I think what, the, what the most of the fighters want to make the civilian left because they want to have the properties, the, the things they have, the things. I know it's a difficult decision. I cannot blame people who left, you know. But uh, I think art and activities in the war zone can uh, give hope to the people and they stay in the apartment. Nothing can tease and make the soul, uh, like uh, fighters angry as that civilian going to his job every day. And this is, I think, very important uh, message. This is fighting civil way. And is the, some people in the, like, who support side, they say, oh, they are coward. No, they are so strong to wake up every morning and go to his job, whatever it is. I saw like shop who had uh, nothing to sell, but he was still going to his shop and open it and with empty shop and, and come back to home in the evening. So, because he used to do that. And this kind of uh, stand, I think it's much important, much powerful than the weapon himself. And uh, I think the civilian of like my city, they did amazing work by staying all last six years, you know. And this is what make the world angry in the beginning from them and later and try to understand and later today they should do something to stop the war. I'm presenting part from the United Aleppo, which I was like all last December. After I won the European Film Award, I ran to Aleppo because I feel that it will be united. So my uh, apartment is in East Aleppo. So what happened, what happened that uh, I take my camera and run around and I start to uh, to shoot pictures of the people come back to a part, to his home, like me also, I come back to my home. You can see one of the photos there, it's just like, uh, it's the checkpoint, which you see it in the nine day movie, and now become bigger after five years, because it was small checkpoint and now become bigger. 
My apartment <coughs> completely from inside is destroyed, but the uh, building still exists, so I have hope. I, I'm lucky much more than the others. You can see here the toy factory. Two brothers, when they come back to home in East Aleppo, they find next like bomb factory, which is you can see the toys everywhere, you know? And this is, was really uh, amazing. I asked them what you do. They say, we choose toys and we, we bring it with us to the school and give it to our friend. And uh, the selfies with the woman, I hear her, she's telling to, uh, to her daughter, let's make selfies front of your aunt apartment. There's no apartment behind them, but they was there, you know? So uh, what, from the accident, I understand nothing happened to the aunt, but uh, just they want to send her the image because maybe she cannot come or maybe she's old, I don't know. But I think I didn't, it, I didn't want to ask question when I come back because I was just like, want to hear and record whatever I feel, whatever I see. Plaza is a self-organized refugee accommodation and also a political space in general for any kind of other support for, for migrants but also in, in general for social rights and uh, yeah it exists now since nearly one year and um, yeah it's a squatter total which remained to be closed for seven years so we decided to, to use it again. We are a self-organized space that means that um, we, we are not paid here, we are not professionals, we are just doing um, it as good as we, as we can and try to involve everybody um, as equal as possible. So um, we have a system of um, yeah, making decisions together and making discussions together but also make the daily work together. We have a language school, so we have like different classes um, for English, Greek, German and at the moment also Spanish. Um, German and Spanish, or especially German, because a lot of people who are here um, are planning to, to go um, to Germany or to Switzerland, so to other European countries and don't want to stay in, in Greece because of the situation. So we decided to have this kind of also yeah, um, language classes besides Greek. Sometimes we have pottery workshops, sometimes we have artists here who are doing art workshops shops especially with kids. We are completely independent, we don't get any money from the governments but also not from NGOs or from uh, parties. Especially at the moment uh, we are facing a quite um, difficult period um, because uh, uh, the government starts to um, restrict even more the, the squad movements and um, yeah, started to evict some, some squads, also in essence to, to got evicted until now. Um, and yeah, there is the danger of more evictions. Um, uh, one minister uh, was saying in an interview that all the buildings, especially in private property, will, will get evicted. And City Plaza is private property, so at the moment we're facing a quite, um, yeah, the situation is under a lot of tension. And yeah, we are, um, we are trying to, to not get evicted, for sure. Um, if they want to evict City Plaza, it's not about evicting only a hotel. It's um, a huge solidarity network behind it, and um, even if they evict it, there will be a lot of things which will remain. So this network, the idea of City Plaza, all the things, but still, um, we we see um, or in, we think that we have a chance to to stay. Uh, from the beginning on, there was kind of a background network uh, because it was so. City Plaza was started by by groups which were already like into the movement since a lot of years before and had a quite huge network of solidarity. Um, and yeah, with the time, a lot of people passed by in City Plaza, came, um, got to know the place, um, learned about the idea, and when they went back, a lot of them started to to do solidarity work there. So from um, 
yeah, starting campaigns for um, for donations to making solidarity actions, making um, yeah, City Plaza a political issue. Um, so there's a lot of um, this background network, and also in a political way, we're trying to to connect a lot of struggles because we think that we are living in a in a time where we have to see the eternal um, picture of what we are facing at the moment. So um, we think it's important to, to connect the struggles and to um, yeah, also work against this nationalism ideas to, to just care about their own country. So we want to have a huger, larger network which is like um, giving, giving more proper answers to, to global questions and to yeah, find a way to, to global justice. Welcome to our fans and to the new episode of Talk Real. We are here in the Varvakian Pavilion of the Athens Biennial uh, and we will elaborate today together on uh, the multiple interrelations, potentials and limits of uh, artistic and cultural strategies concerning one of today's most pressing uh, issue in Europe, the issue of borders and migration. And if you want, Athens is the most perfect uh, site to do this talk since it is uh, the first uh, city that uh, receives, or one of the first cities in Europe that uh, receives uh, people who look to Europe as a refuge from war, from poverty, from env environmental destruction and difficult living conditions. Um, and I would like to start this talk uh, with Loretta. Uh, Loretta, you are um, an important figure for the migrant movement in Greece. Uh, Loretta is uh, a spokesperson for the United African Women uh, Organization. She's an outstanding activist in uh, Greek migration politics and uh, you receive the fresh arrived in Europe. Uh, you try to facilitate uh, their search for a future and a better life here in Greece for decades now. And at the same time, you uh, are intervening in Greek society with political demands. My question would be, what is exactly you do on the ground? And what kind of uh, role or to what extent do you think culture plays a role in that? Thank you very much. I am... Uh the United African Women Organization, what we do is we offer them um, legal aid, social welfare, um, up-to-date um, on immigration, mm -hmm. and jobs information, and um, information about how they can learn the Greek language. Because when you are in a country, any foreign country, you have to learn the language. So that is most important. We give them for the culture we have a um, festival annual festival mm -hmm. to eliminate um, xenophobia mm -hmm. because it's rising all over Europe not only in Greece and then um, uh, we call it a um, uh, um, uh, festival uh, um, uh, solidarity and culture we collaborate with Greeks artists and um, Greek citizens, citizen, and for us that is a door, open a door to the Greeks to come inside us so that they can know us. Because for example, African women in general, let me say I am, uh, immigrant women, work as domestic workers in their houses. And we know all their culture, we know all their, their families and all what they are but they don't know anything about us. So with this Solidarity and Culture Festival, we get to make Greeks and immigrants come together and know each other and to eliminate, as I told you, the xenophobia. Mm -hmm. Yes. So culture is uh, like a means or a tools for encountering. Yes. Culture is a, is a, is a tool. 
whether you you know the language, you cannot speak the language, you go to foreign country. Um, culture is a mean of com means of communication, mm -hmm. means of integrating into any society. Mm -hmm. It speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. You 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 can understand culture. That is 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 what I have to say. Is a is a must. Culture is the best way of communication and uh, to make people bring the whole world together. Okay. Yes. And Katya, you're someone who has been living in Greece for very long. You know the site here very well. And you are um, conducting a product, pro project of workshops in refugee camps um, who are led by artists, if you want. Um, for me, it would be interesting if you give us a little insight of how Athens, its civil society and also its artistic society has been receiving uh, the people who refuge from other countries, who flee to Greece, and why you felt the need that you have to do this series of workshops in refugee camps, um, parting from the situation of how people are receiving refugees here. Well, I first of all, I want to say Greece has been completely overwhelmed with the huge influx of refugees, especially from Syria right now, and it's really doing everything it can to receive them, but it is completely overwhelmed. And there's a lot of institutions in Greece trying to deal with the issue, civil institutions as well as public institutions, but the refugees are living oftentimes in really un unacceptable conditions. And basically the two countries, Greece and Germany, are the countries w that are mainly involved in the refugee issues right now because ma migrants come to Greece to set over, preferably to Germany most of the time because the conditions there are still considered pretty good for refugees. <coughs> and what we did in these workshops was as Athens Scene, Autonomy Academy and Athens Biennale, we brought together Syrians from the countries of the migrants or the country of the migrants. The greatest number of migrants that come today are from Syria. So Syrian artists together with Greek and German artists mm -hmm. to do a series of uh, artistic workshops together with migrants and Athenians because we believe that first of all there needs to be an exchange in these cultures we don't we think that in order to grow together and to develop a vision for a positive vision for the Europe of today we need to learn together and we cannot have host countries integrating refugees only the learning process needs to be a two-sided one so the people coming from the migrant countries need to learn and we need to learn. We need to learn from each other and grow together. So the artists were developing these workshops together as in, and we built up a platform and we built up a platform in the participating uh, people participating in the workshop as well because we are also considering it very important to demonstrate in this experiment so if you so will to exchange the role of their learner with the teacher okay. so if I um, understood it well for you culture is like a communication tool yes, yeah, communication. that goes beyond language um, you were pointing out the fact that it has to be a double sided process of people learning from each other and if we see uh, if we look at the artistic field today we can see a variety of strategies also of how you deal with the issues and there is uh, uh, strategies that use art in order to provide comfort or moments of joy um, there is strategies who uh, produce events uh, and products to raise money. There is strategies of workshops, as you say, to uh, promote skill development, but also the tools for self-representation for people. Um, and there is also uh, the, the creating of spaces, of spaces of encounter, of participatory spaces. And uh, last but not least, there's the, the creation, I mean, art can uh, create new imaginaries, right? It can create new perceptions, uh, new semantics and rhetorics of how we perceive 
what we call um, the people, the refugees, you know, what this is, and maybe also shift our, our language and perception of it. Um, and you, Navin, you're someone who has been working now in a refugee camp in the middle of Athens. Uh, it's uh, the Eleonas refugee camp. Um, and as you told me, you were invited in order to do a mural yeah. piece. This means something to make the camp a bit more beautiful. Yeah. And uh, in the process of trying to make this piece, you realized um, that actually you have to change your strategy into a more participatory practice, mm. yes, and do something yeah. else with it. So um, I would be interested to, um, uh, I would be interested in the why you actually yeah. had to change your practice. Yeah. Your project is called the Gammon Project. <coughs> Maybe you can uh, talk about why you had to do this shift mm. and what are your objectives yeah. with this practice you do that. Um, well, first of all, I'm an artist based in Athens and I've been here for two years, which means that um, the work that I've done with the refugee community is much more long term. So one of the things I first noticed uh, working with volunteers is that a lot of people who come and volunteer, especially since sort of 2015, are people who can come for short periods of time, put in a huge amount of energy, uh, work every single hour that they're awake, and then they exhaust themselves and leave. Um, and this is something I noticed over and over again, and I realized that my engagement could be a much more long-term engagement where perhaps it's also a part-time engagement, but one that continues uh, and doesn't really have an end point. And I was invited uh, into Eleonas originally to create a, a mural. They wanted some art in the public space. It's a camp run by the government which actually allows people to have the main uh, sort of parts of their lives dealt with. They have um, you know, adequate sanitation, food, shelter, heat, but there's very little in terms of culture or um, content. Um, and when I was uh, visited the site, there's a 30 meter long wall right in the center of the camp and the, the wall was unsafe. It was unsafe for me to work, but it was also an unsafe place for people to spend time. Um, and I really realized that there was no, there was no solution <coughs> to this public space through painting a mural. It felt like a very empty gesture for me. Um, and so I didn't want to say no, but I just realized that perhaps the mural itself would become an excuse to look at <coughs> and change public space. And that it, to, to generate a space where a mural was really possible and would mean something, rather than a mural that like, sort of went up and then was ignored or um, didn't have a life inside the camp. So over the last six <coughs> months I've been running workshops um, in the camp and spending time there understanding what was an, the necessary infrastructure to define this space as a useful public space, what did people want to use it for, um, and backgammon, the playing of backgammon seemed to be like one of the major things that became this point of contact. Um, so we used that as a first discussion point um, and the game itself is about the movement of people so it became a very interesting conceptual framework to make images and talk about the movement of people without referring to a narrative uh, which can be quite traumatizing and specific and in fact in fact you can just make versions of this game that actually talk about your story of, of your own movement but you don't have to be specific and it ends up with very beautiful forms as well but very simple geometric forms <coughs> Um, but, it, but the first six months were putting in lights, fixing the wall, mm -hmm. uh, building a garden, investing in the space with the residents in order to bring about a mural. And the mural really is kind of almost the last part of that process. Okay. So actually what you created is a common working situation, <laughs> a common yeah. working procedure. A common the territory there. in the camp, but, but actually more importantly, a territory which does not just finish in the camp, but is also one that extends out of the camp and extends the community, my, my artistic community, as a place that anyone in the camp can come and spend time with uh, and create a much more uh, liminal space and two-way stream mm -hmm. so that people don't feel like we're just kind of coming and doing a project in the camp and then I go back to my own life. Mm -hmm. like, in the long term, it's about creating a continuing kind of movement across that and inviting them out to do their own projects, to work in spaces that have um, 
machinery to make things uh, and and socialize in a completely different group of people uh, and that's I think the more kind of long-term social aspect of the work as well okay and Pinar you have another strategy I would say you're an artist based in Istanbul um, and you are uh, yourself persecuted in your country yeah. for your artistic and political work um, and what you are doing is uh, more or less working together with artists at risk or with artists uh, in diaspora, artists that are displaced. Um, I wanted to uh, know why you started this work focusing on uh, displaced artists and um, what are your experiences um, of work as, working as an artist with artists in refuge? Yeah, um, thank you. Um, <coughs> my first contact with, um, with the refugee artists was in, at the end of 2014. Uh, I'm a writer also and I was wondering if there were any, uh, any refugee artists uh, in Turkey, in Istanbul especially. Because people were always thinking about refugees with their you know, poor um, visibility on the streets. And, um, Nobody thinks about uh, if there are some intellectuals, some artists, or some musicians, or something. Yeah, somebody's like that. And I research, research about uh, the, the artist, and I found five uh, painters from Syria. And yeah, I just invited all of them to my home <coughs> to dinner, and we just talk about uh, who we are and what are we doing, what are. Uh, difficulties in the city, um, if they are contacted with Turkish art scene or not, what are they thinking about Istanbul, something like that. We never talk about if they are like, against the regime or not in Syria, something like that. I, I, I don't want to mention uh, something like that because it's not important. For me. And then I wrote an article about uh, our conversations and <coughs> it was published in, in, in the art newspapers and also the, the, the general uh, media and then I suddenly noticed that the other media such as TVs, radios and uh, documentary filmmakers they noticed uh, this uh, artist and they made news and also some documentary films with them and we, I just wanted to make them more visible you mm -hmm. know because they hardly contact with Turkish <coughs> artists and some of them made exhibitions and I just try to follow their stories because uh, they had difficulties in Turkey. One of the most difficulties it was um, if you are refugee, you you don't have a, any a special organization for refugees. You have to find your house. You have to find um, health insurance or you know the education or the learning language yourself. There is no special organizations in Turkey, even that we have so big money from the European Union. Mm -hmm. uh, but they have to do everything themselves. <coughs> so they feel like some of them feel like tourists that visiting country. So that's why three of these artists, they, uh, they have to move to Turkey. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, you know, as I told, I got arrested. You know, I had, I was in prison four days, and then now I'm accusing being a terrorist because mm -hmm. because of that. Just just I, I joined peace march in Kurdish area because they want to cut relationship between the West people and the Kurdish the the, the contact, and also they they research my Facebook comments. And they found something against, to, of course, governments, which are actually not aggressive comments. Yeah, but now they sentenced me 18 years in prison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every two months we have a case. Sometimes I have to go, sometimes not. But it's a big um, trauma, actually, because um, do I don't know about my future. I don't know where should I go, where is my home, where is my homeland, you know? But I don't believe Turkey anymore. So you feel mm -hmm. that um, actually you as someone persecuted, you have a lot of in common yes. with people that are mm -hmm. arriving. Uh -huh. And as uh, when I, if I understood you right, uh, what you're actually doing is to 
just be with people and helping each other yeah. as people who are at risk, you know, as yeah. subjects who are at mm -hmm. risk mm -hmm. and opening doors for them in the mm -hmm. uh, local art scene in Istanbul, etc. Yeah. Because there is uh, also the argument, we have to, you know, state that uh, in the art field it became really fashionable mm -hmm. to do something with refugees, yes. mm -hmm. you know. Yes. It uh, became uh, a must, if you want, yes. and uh, there is also the critique uh, that uh, refugees or people who are in need are actually used by artists as material, you yeah. know, as a yeah. form material, mm -hmm. former material, um, uh, without them benefiting. Mm -hmm. And um, the question is, how do you deal with your own work in this field? How do you deal with this question? Yeah. I mean, maybe Navin. Um, yeah, I mean, so the one thing I would say about this is that, you know, this is the first time I've worked uh, in this kind of context of working with a refugee or mi migrant community. And actually most of the people I work with are people who are unable to pass into Europe and who have been stuck here. So, because I'm French, partially French, I speak French in the camp and I mostly work with West Africans uh, who've, who've, who are unable to move forward. So it's a different situation. But I also don't know if I assimilate the work that I do in the camp into my artistic practice. Like, I can paint. It's a nice skill to have. It's an interesting thing, but I, I don't necessarily place this work in the rest of my the context of what I do because it's such a new thing for me that I and such a changing thing that I don't think that I know how to assimilate it or to talk about it. The other part of my practice is much more stable and has certain a series of interests, and you know potentially this is something which will always remain separate and just be part of <coughs> what I'm able to do in this space, uh, a, a skill and a way of thinking about public space. But I don't think that everything that I do in life has to be has to be part of my being an artist or my kind of, of my practice. So you would say your work in the refugee camps is more an acti <coughs> activist work? Uh, I mean, I, th I think the most important thing is just to act. Searching for I mean, I don't even want to say that I'm an activist artist. I just do because I can. And, you know, I feel very privileged to live in Athens where I am not persecuted. I can live in a way that allows me to make work full time and that allows me the spare time um, to put something back into a system that needs it. And that it's, activism is just, for me, is just doing and that necessity to do um, and to be open. Um, and okay. I think that it's different with other artists, mm -hmm. but I think it's always best to talk about the thing that you know about, which is yeah. yourself. Yeah. For Loretta, do you for hear this uh, from the people you work with yes. in the ground, that yes. they complain that there are formal material for of arts? Course, yeah. Of course, like, we, like for, for instance, I forgot to tell you that our organization also do um, workshops to women. And we have a lot of African women who are artists, really but they get disappointments all the time. Mm -hmm. What is this disappointment? They are not having that same, uh, how they call it, privilege to, like you now, you are doing it yeah. as a um, um, volunteer, on voluntary things because, but these women can't support themselves. Absolutely. And they are in a difficult position. Mm -hmm. So they get disappointment, they disappointed when they do their work and they don't gain anything from it, not economic and not anything. And they end up cleaning people out. For example, a woman in our organization is a very good artist and activist. She is disappointed. And she said to me, look at me, I'm a good artist, but I end up cleaning people out because I need to survive. Nobody can support her. So it makes them disappoint. Instead of continuing their artistic work, they end up doing different jobs that are not in their agenda, as I can see. Mm -hmm. So it's a very difficult thing for people like immigrants and um, uh, refugees yeah. who don't have any support because of that. Yeah. They lose their, their, their um, 
their aim, they use, they lose um, um, the identities, their identity well, and yeah. all the rest mm-hmm. of it. Yes. So it brings them back to another position that they were not in, in their future plan. plan okay. And I mean, Bina, who you are working with people who are refugees and artists, mm-hmm. would you say this changes something that you are some, you're working with people who are in the similar position? as you are Mm -hmm. and maybe and this would be also uh, my next question we are talking about imaginaries like how do we see you know how do we talk about people Mm -hmm. who flee their countries Mm -hmm. um what kind of imageries do we produce Mm -hmm. in art do you have the impression um, you create different Mm -hmm. relations or different imageries different symbolism in your work being someone who knows maybe the position they're um, talking from? Yeah, actually uh, um, I can say something about uh, the, um, some artists from more west, for example, when they met with uh, artists from Middle East or anybody from Middle East, they are so far away, away from the culture. For example, I have a, uh, one example, uh, the musician Ahmed my friend from Baghdad, he introduced uh, one family uh, as, a, as his family to other friends, to other artists. He said, this is my family. Mm-hmm. But they are not his family, mm-hmm. actually. Mm-hmm. They came, they walk all the way from Greece to, to Vienna together. Mm-hmm. They have each other all the way. So he felt like mm-hmm. he, they are his family. Mm-hmm. But then uh, the, the artist asked me, He's lying. His his family is not here. His family is in Istanbul. I try to tell, no, his this is not his family. But he feels like this is family. This is a part of our culture. He he says something like that. She is my sister, or he is my brother, something like that. But if you don't know the culture, you feel like a little bit outside. You have to <coughs> a little bit know. You have to you have to spend more time to know them. You know. Uh, if I have to say something about my work, it's um, I don't want to sh- use any like any war images mm-hmm. or any damaged streets or bombing or something like that. For me, uh, you know, not only peoples are moving, immigrating, but also the cultures, the elements of the cultures like food culture, music culture, dance culture, shopping culture, everything. You know, they are also moving. And they are shaping our words, actually. We cannot think about history without thinking about migration. Mm-hmm. Migration, migration shape all this, um, all this um, culture of the world, actually. Yes. Also the Mediterranean. Mm-hmm. It's not only the, the shape by Greek people, you know, mm-hmm. many Africans yes. came. Yes. <laughs> the same in Turkey, actually. So you're talking about... <laughs> I try to use this wood as, an, as, an, as a metaphor of all these cultures, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like a um, threshold, threshold between Middle East and West, mm-hmm. this uh, Mediterranean. Okay. So, so it's not only yeah. the migrant, but actually mm-hmm. we're all products of migrating mm-hmm. cultures, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. And um, this is maybe something that... Um, is also a, a common space for us in Europe, since it's a space, a territorial space that has a lot of cultures mm-hmm. inside, but for some reason um, uh, is also um, blocking itself yes. from getting influence from other cultures. So my last question maybe to you, who is uh, here in Greece doing the groundwork, and also to Loretta, is what would you demand of Europe at the moment um, to make this migrating culture facilitating and influencing uh, our European cultures and maybe also in terms of artists what you do demand from art institutions or from artists in Europe to do? I personally think I really like the way that you put it that we are doing art because we want to do something and this is what we deal with at the moment it's a very current issue migration is a very current issue so I wouldn't demand anything from artistic movements it's basically something that is in we are all affected by that all our countries are affected by 
And I do believe that mutual understanding is the first step to create a dialogue and to create a coexistence. We need to find ways to live together and for that I think it's very important to give the migrants a voice and for them to be able to somehow help them sustain their own living and build things up to I don't know exactly what that could look like but help them help them to be independent in a way and uh, enter in a dialogue with us not in a way that we are you know the, the the beneficial hosts but we are all put in a situation that we were not prepared for by neither of our decisions. I mean, they didn't decide to migrate because they wanted to. They left their countries, they left everything behind. And they're really, really courageous in doing this because they don't know what future awaits them at all. You know, they mm -hmm. leave the, yeah. So it's, uh, it, it, I, I, I personally believe, first of all, that everybody needs to be aware that we are not, you know, the, 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 beneficial hosts helping them but we all need to help each other in a way and Loretta, what do I you agree say? with her <laughs> more support for the, these people because um, as she said nobody leaves um, immigrants as an immigrant as a refugee you don't leave your country, country because you are going for holidays mm -hmm. uh, not for holidays there is some reason you leave your country but they supposed to support these immigrants and refugees with their arts work because as I told you before, art speaks volumes. You can never know what arts can do. Art can reach where no no news or no government can reach. It can meet the ordinary people. For example, you, you live in a building, in a building, in an apartment. You live there, you don't even say hello to each other. But art can bring you together. So those people, they need support from the European Union. And what I'm demanding from the European Union and from the Greek states, and what I'm demanding is that um, the, the European Union has to see that um, Greece is a, has a um, serious economical problem say, um, now these days. <coughs> and at the same time with the, with the refugees and uh, um, uh, the refugees, asylum seeker, whatever we call them, and immigrants, they're supposed to give um, support to Greece, to help Greece, so that Greece will help the immigrants and the refugees. And with arts, arts is a very important, so play a very important role in all our society. Hearts bring the whole world together. Art bring love. Yeah. Art bring but peace first, and the everything. People should be also in the position to enter Europe. Right? Yes, yes. So yes. before I think uh, <laughs> uh, we talk about how they can be supported, yes. we have to also think about that they have to be allowed. They, to, they, they should mm -hmm. allow them. And uh, what what is it that um, Europe should open their borders? Yeah. You yeah. understand? They should open their borders let people free because we you know for example the time of slavery is gone but it's another slavery now going on before when you the, the, we have the slavery issue you, you can see they put chain in people foot people's feet and hands so people decided let's stop state slavery but the slavery now is a different slavery so mm. they have to do something about that to make people free their mind and live independently this is my own opinion. Okay. Mm. Thank you very much. I think that's a good last word. Thank you for being here. <laughs>
academia. And from my perspective, it was something that I was planning to do when I have installed the academia as a self-organized grassroots university in Athens. And then the next step was to open it up towards the issue of migration, also because of Greece has always been a hub of cultures. So when Europe looks for its own identity in Greece and looks at Parthenon as a first place, it's a big misunderstanding of a colonial nature because Greece has been always everything. It has been always the whole world. And this is what is happening now, um, uh, which is a, an enforced kind of mix of cultures. But uh, and this is an advantage for Europe. And we here in this European ghetto are very happy and proud that uh, there is a certain state and a condition of society which is called no nations, no borders. So rather than um, crying, we are uh, celebrating oneness of the world and saying to the entire world, no nations, no borders.